Lana here from the Schoolhouse for Art. Um, welcome to another Schoolhouse for Art conversation um, where I get to share these amazing chats that I have with some just brilliant artists and creative minds and it's just such a lovely way to be able to share all these um, conversations rather than just keeping it all to myself. Um, today I have the absolute pleasure of having a chat with Sinead Lawless. Um, if you don't know uh, Sinead Lawless, I suggest you check check out some of her work and more about her on SineadLawless.com. She has the most infectious um, passion for colour and um, also how art helps with uh, as it. creative block um, and Sinead has uh, she won the painting the nation okay I am back let's go live with oh, here we are. oh I was trying to stay all calm Sinead I don't know if it came across me too I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was doing. It just kept saying that I, I can't join. I don't know. It was me. It was me. It was definitely me there. Um, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Slightly sweating after that little technical issue. I know. It's always the same, isn't it? It's like that first few minutes, like, okay, how do we come down from this now? We just need to. I know. Yeah, I'm in the room. <laughs> I don't even know when it cut out because I was trying to gush you with all of this love and adoration for what you do. And... I possibly was just talking to myself, but in case people didn't hear, what I love about your work, Sinead, is when you look close, like if you if you were to hold a piece right up close, you just see this beautiful mix of color. Um, so, um, I guess so consciously put down, you can see the thought behind all the color that you've placed. And it might not necessarily represent anything. And even the colors that you see, you wouldn't say, well, this is definitely someone's skin color or this is definitely a tree that I'm looking at and then as you stand back there's this um, like this composition of a portrait or landscape just appears and all of those colors suddenly make sense um and I know when you host the workshops and all of the classes that you do with us one of the biggest uh takeaways that people get is that infectious uh, passion for color and what you do um it just rubs off on people and how you use art as a therapy for sort of, you know, organizing your thoughts or your processes. So, yeah, kudos to you and all that you do. Yeah. <laughs> You're great. You. And and I know things are really hectic for you at the moment. So really grateful for your time today. I am, I'm really, I'm really glad to be here. Things are very hectic in my life at the moment. But this is a lovely, I can put a little bubble around this and be like, okay, we get to talk about nice arty stuff. And I get to pretend the rest of it doesn't exist right now. And I can just be in this. We are just room. here. So I appreciate this. So it's all yeah. good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, it, and, I, and I think it's like, I, I have the pleasure of seeing you every week. Um, uh, uh, you know, because you're, you're here doing all of our classes. Um, and I know even, even just to say hello, we just end up going into these really in, uh, interesting and long conversations where we, you know, things just come up. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I mean, I listen, I I could talk for days. As my students well know, if there's any students on here, they know I can just talk. That's just my thing. But uh, like you were saying earlier about, I, I'm, I'm big into the abstraction of things. So it's like, I, I obviously love when it all comes together from a whole, but it, it, it's almost like a metaphor for life, isn't it? Where like everything is kind of all over the shop, but then when you stand back, it actually all makes sense. And it, it, it gets very meta. <laughs> that is, I like that though. That's nice. <laughs> That is nice. So, um, and I guess on that point, we could probably stay here four days just chatting about all of the things that we talked about. But we did say we would try and make this a little bit more focused mm -hmm. because especially this time of year, um, people will have made re resolutions and all of these promises to themselves um, that nearly end up putting pressure and having an adverse effect. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they, they really want to properly put in the work and the time to 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 their creative uh, site practice yeah. and um and sometimes you're just met with a brick wall 
and the thought of an empty canvas or a blank sheet of paper yeah. is just too much. It can be and overwhelming. You, yeah, it yeah, can be just, overwhelming. There's so much. Like when you first, there's a couple of things. Like if you're somebody who used to paint all the time and you had achieved a certain amount of like, even if it was just amongst your friends and family, a certain amount of like, you know, credibility with them. And then to not have done it for a while and to feel rusty and then to have to go, well, I'm going to have to make some bad art for a while before I can get back to that level. That can really make a wall for you you can be it, it can be a real problem you know and then it's just that expectation of it having to be a certain way and I think the problem is that with with painting in particular like as you're painting you you can't help but produce a product there's always going to be a product as like this proof that you did it you know like if you're a musician or if you're a dancer you know you practice and you practice and you practice and you fall over and you get back up and you break strings on your guitar and you fix them but nobody sees that they only get to see the performance at the end whereas for artists as we're practicing we're producing stuff and sometimes it's bad stuff and and that's just part of it but it's it's hard to explain that to you know, the people who like to comment on our work, like our friends and family walking through the kitchen going, oh, look at that, and, you know, and, it, and it's because you, you kind of feel like you're constantly on show a little bit, I think, not everyone, but, you know, so I think that's where some of that fear comes from, that kind of sense of wanting to do it right. And then once you, once you um, downward spiral of perfectionism, you know, it's got to really watch out for that perfectionist, that inner perfectionist that wants it to look a certain way. And it also sucks the fun out of it. You know yeah and is there something about you know if you is that every single piece is there an expectation that that has to be a sellable piece or you have that thought in your mind where this is the, you know I have to create art that will sell so this has to be really good is yeah, there not an understanding that um you know that that process of failing also applies to making art well, I think that, like, I think Scala is a good place, like, in the sense that, right, we have, we have a few courses now, like the Atelier, the Cornerstone, the Path and all the rest of it, right? And there's more of a focus now on, like, it's like the gym, right? The gym for art. And it's like turning up and going, no, this is an art practice. Like, but I think there is that sense of pressure that when you're creating, it's like, well, this, this is sellable because you're trying to justify the amount of hours you're spending because it, it takes a long time to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a general idea with the public that if you're painting you're immediately you're either good or you're not I don't know this is very kind of like a binary kind of like a black and white line of like you're talented or you're not talented and it's just such a myth you know but I yeah. think it's it's there and it's it's all of our kind of subconscious it's kind of so it's about saying no you know we're learning we're practicing and showing up consistently for yourself whatever that looks like the consistency could be every day or it could be every week or it could be every month um but the more often you do it the more the more confidence you get at what you can create and um and it's good i think to be in a nice environment where you're being supported and not just like by the teachers but by your peers like that's what i love about the classes is, is to watch the camaraderie between the students and how everyone goes around and actually they're all trying to solve the same problem right we're all working on the same pictures so we're all trying to solve mm -hmm. the same problem and walking around and seeing how everyone's brains work differently and how they've approached the problem and that and, and seeing how it just kind of a spark fires off across the room and everyone gets inspired by someone else's approach and leaning into that community rather than again and I, I don't know where I'm pulling this from exactly but I suppose just over the years the, the idea that art is a competition do you know and I suppose in a way in the art world like there are like say, there, say there's grants or anything like that it's always like you're up against another artist you know it's kind of like this whole thing how it works but in the end of the day actually we're much better when we come together and mm -hmm. support each other and yeah you know and not wanting to feel like there's a whole thing as well of not wanting to feel like you are you know being derivative or that you're copying someone or but the thing is it's all like that's you have to learn some way you have to be able to mimic and copy and that's how musicians do it and dancers do it and actors do it and why not painters you know and i think um it's possible that you know even having the regular commitment to turning up at yeah. a certain time that's part of getting things moving in the right direction mm -hmm. um and then, as you said, when artists actually come together, and it's one of the things I love to see when we do our exhibitions, that, you know, even if somebody didn't sell something, they've still gotten, they've still taken away something from the weekend or the day because they've spoken to so many other like-minded people and sharing uh, their sort of creative journey or they'll talk about how they do what they do. Mm -hmm. um, 
and there's lots of inspiration then that comes from that um and just turning up sometimes is part of it and is enough it's good for the soul i mean in a way i suppose what i find in the classes is that like pretty much anyone who comes is kind of nerdy about it like we're all into it we're all into going to the exhibitions and getting nerdy about how did the paint get on there what what were the what was the process and again finding that when you're speaking to maybe family and friends about that that they're not as into it as you are you're like oh, okay but when you actually get into like how did that purple come to be with other artists it's we all get so giddy about it and it, it's it's so lovely to be able to to focus in on, a, on an interest like that and like you say being able to reach out be it at an exhibition or be it in a class or whatever with other people that are on the same journey as you is so good for us none of us are painting because you know like it's it's not if you're doing it because there's a passion there's a fire inside you that you're compelled to do it mm -hmm. and so th that's the driving force and then to kind of say well okay I need an environment that's going to help me to grow you know because it's not going to happen in solitude necessarily you know mm -hmm. so yeah and and what is your process then uh, um, in terms of um, kind of getting things started or, or, you know, if you, if you, are you working on anything at the moment? You do, you uh, have a lot of things. I mean, yeah. Any I one mean, thing I, I in particular. On things. I have actually got projects in the, exciting projects in the pipeline, um, but they're more at an early research stage. I'm not actually, nothing's on the easel right now because the easel is about to go in a removal truck soon <laughs> to oh. be moved, right so the whole house is being cracked up but um but i have i have projects that are you know in the in the mix and i'm, I'm i think it's going to be i'm, I'm excited about this year i'm excited Great. about what's going to happen and i'm always teaching as well which i really adore um but to talk about process what's interesting for me and i don't know how many people this would be relevant for right but like for a long time i would go i'd have to create a painting and it would be like this complete like am i in the mood to paint oh my god panic stations procrastination then let's get it done and then like oh why isn't it working and you know this whole roller coaster and then I discovered actually that um, I'm neurodivergent right now that's a whole rabbit hole we can go down okay and that's not not relevant to everybody but what it did for me so in my case ADHD is what came up for me and it's something that you just have your whole life but I finally in my 40s realized oh hang on and as a result of getting that diagnosis I then ha had the impetus to go and see an occupational therapist right to talk about hey um how do I do the day-to-day -day stuff? Because apparently mm -hmm. everyone else thinks this is like common sense and might, does not compute for me. And we're talking about really simple, I mean, when I say simple, they're not simple to me, but like, I suppose that kind of brain, it requires a model for things that maybe other brains would just do automatically. And it could be as simple as just, how do you get out of bed? How do you go for a shower? I know, you know, it's just it's these things. And what happened was, as a result of going through that, I saw so many correlations between how I just do things like eating and you know whatever and cleaning and whatever and how I run my art practice and how I how I consistently show up for that and I adapted those mechanisms into into that and realized I need really explicit instructions in order to start every day and started going well if I just show up and if I'm if I'm using like limited palette is something I use a lot love a limited palette and for years I was like what, what colors am I using today and now it's all about the limited palette and actually it's a world of wonder and it's like you can create so many colors and I it's so exciting anyway that's <laughs> another day's talk but <laughs> love a limited palette as you probably noticed and you know and I was like well you know that's a really good tool because I come into the studio and I know what paints I'm using immediately I'm like I'm working on a painting and it's these three colors and that takes a little step out of the day and then knowing okay I have a timer and I go I'm going to work in 15 minute blocks and it's like I put the 15 minute timer on before I even start and that 15 minutes goes into prep and once the beep goes you kind of get this little hit of like oh that's grand now that's done and just compartmentalizing it like that and mm. kind of a list for yourself and it sounds probably really uncreative to a lot of people but it's amazing how putting those parameters around yourself just sets you up and the thing is once you're painting you're like you're in in fact it's hard mm -hmm. to come back out that's the thing you know but it's it's how you get yourself in and what I also like to do is before I finish a painting session is set myself up for the next day and that might that, that would be different depending on where I am in the painting but for example if I'm painting a portrait and there's more to be done I grab a little post-it note and I do a tiny little sketch of the portrait and I number maybe five spots in the portrait that I want to address the next day now if I come in the next day I'm, I'm going to see the same thing so it's not that I'm like oh, it's not that I won't notice that the eye is like on the wrong side or, you know, <laughs> upside down or whatever. But it's more that I don't have to think. I'm going to go, oh, I said I'd start in this area. 
yes. and I'd start with these colors and I'd start for 15 minutes. And it just takes that for me to get going. And then I'm in with a cup of tea. Well, always. <laughs> I think it's, but it is interesting, isn't it? That when, what you, what you do then for your process is you, you're not necessarily even thinking of where the painting needs to be in 12 yeah. weeks time or, you know, after a hundred hours or however long you're going to put into it. It's, it's really just saying what's happening right now and starting this pathway in your brain on how the activity goes. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly you're in that creative flow exactly. that you're yeah. really looking for. I, I was saying it like, what was it? It's like, you know, those kind of like, you know, those dandelion clock thing, those little kind of things that whisper in the air and you try and catch one and every time you try and catch it, it, it just goes past your hand and you're trying to catch yes. it. I had this thing the other day where I was like, you know, if you're having a creative idea and it's coming in or you're trying to remember a dream and you're like, every time you reach for it, you almost like the wind of your hand almost pushes it away, you know? And when you're painting like the, the ideas for what you want to do, the creativity, it's, it's there the whole time like that, just kind of hovering around you. And it takes for you to focus on something for it to just land on you. But if you keep like looking for it, it just keeps floating away from you. And, oh, nice. and you know, I just, I was just like, that just made sense to me. And I was like, when I come in and go, I'm gonna start on this nostril that I told myself yesterday I was gonna work on, even though I have no interest in working on nostrils today, but that's just where I'm at. Before long, my brain will go, ooh, ooh, what about? And I'm like, okay, bring me there. And then it becomes about discovery. You know, it's okay. like, oh, what about the ear though? And I'm like, oh, you wanna work on the ear? Let's do the ear. But then you're in, you see, you know what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to like, oh, this thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I suppose where, you know, you never, well, maybe it's not exactly the same, but say if you've decided I'm going to go f to the gym every day mm. or I'm going to go for a walk every day or I want to go for swims in the ocean every day. Yeah. Um, the thought of it is always kind of grim. Yeah. Or overwhelming or, or unachievable. Yeah. Yeah. And I then remember. suddenly you just, you're like, let's just get to the door or let's just get to the edge of the ocean and see where we're at. That's it. Yeah. And, and giving yourself the freedom to say, well, maybe today I'll just look at the ocean. Maybe it's too cold for me. But then that might change when you get there. Like, that's the thing. It's kind of taking the pressure off yourself. Yeah. And I suppose it comes down to, like, habit stacking and, and all that, too, if you think about it. And building yeah. a practice. But it's about practice, building a practice and not attaching yourself to the outcome. And that's not always re realistic because sometimes we have to paint because we have to produce something. And, and that's mm -hmm. fine, too. But I've also found that um, there are times in my practice when I'll be going through like an experimentation phase. So it kind of, I haven't managed to figure out when that happens. It just does happen. But if that happens while I'm mid painting, that can be problematic. So it could happen that I am so, so, I've suddenly discovered a new color or something. I'm like, ooh, I want to use this, but I'm in the middle of another painting. And I'm like, oh, I have to finish that one. And it's like, the excitement isn't there for that. You know, and it's kind of like, you have to allow yourself to have some breakout time to experiment with new things. To, cl to clear yourself off to just do the, the work of the other mm -hmm. things that you're doing. And sometimes it is just a case of like, it's an hour of work that you have to do and it's not all like exciting, you know? Oh, got to cough, sorry. <coughs> um, sorry about that. But, um, okay. you know, but kind of leaning into that and knowing that, um, but I think, I think everyone who paints knows that. We, we all know the part where we're fighting and we're like, oh, you know, this isn't working out, but it just beyond that, that's when it does work out. It's like, just don't give up. Just keep yeah. going. It, it, you'll get there. Um, you're just on the other side of it. And don't, you know, the whole like wanting to, it's the artistic temperament, Lana. You just want to throw it at the window. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, there's that big fight between one side of your brain and the other. Yeah. Which one is going to win? Yeah. Um, and do you have, so when you, you know, that limited palette is, is a massive discovery for you. Um, so having your palette ready, is there other things that you do to help keep you on that path of process to keep the creativity going? It's, this is a weird one, okay? But clean your brushes. Like, don't leave it till the next day. If the first thing you have to do when you come in to paint is clean from oh. yesterday, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Not a great start. You know, yeah. it's like it's like me going to bed at night, going to do the dishes. I'm like, I don't want to do the dishes. But <laughs> you want to wake up to a clean counter, not yesterday's food. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I always um, find myself thanking my myself after I've done that task when I yes. show up the next day. I'm like, mm -hmm. thank you. That was really thoughtful That's that really I did that one. for the I, me I of actually, today. I wrote that above my sink where my brushes are. I wrote, thank you, signed future me. Right? Oh. So that... 
that's yeah, exactly I have that what there. I mean. So it's like when I'm washing brushes, I'm like, you're welcome. You know, yeah. it's like whatever you have to do to just, and they don't have to be perfect, you know, just even a yeah. bit of solvent, just get the paint off them. I don't know, whatever you do, um, because that's a real bummer if you're yes. like trying to get into it and then you're having to deal with yesterday's mess you know yes um so that's like, that's a thing <laughs> well that's a good thing and I do I I feel like I I you know there's lots of times where you don't you really don't want to do it but you know that it would take more effort for the future you if you wait to do it yeah um the next time that you're like oh I'll just get it done now and then it's done yeah um and and anything else any other kind of tips say <laughs> after the same thing happens within the painting, actually. So while you're working the painting, there are moments when you're like, I'm just going to skip that bit because uh, it's, you know, but if you do that, you're the one who pays the consequences later. So it's <laughs> kind of like, just, uh, just, just get through it and, and say, this is a gift for my future self. I'm going to do this cheek because the cheek is usually there's nothing going on in the cheek. If you're doing a portrait and you're like, I want to do an eye, <laughs> you know, yes. you're like, no, no, spend your time here and, and all the rest of it. And uh, that's, that's what I would do anyway. But yeah, everyone wants to do the eye. The eyes are are, are such a key put piece and and a very um. They're they're a very uh, prominent part to most paintings. But that's where the dopamine is. You know, that's mm. where the like you get the dopamine because you're like, oh yeah, I succeeded. I I created something that looks like something, and you know. But when when I look and again back to what I was saying at the start and what you were saying mm -hmm. about abstracting. But when you look close to one of your eyes, and I know I have um. Uh, isn't it Ellie's portrait, your daughter's eye that we've yes. we, we have? Yeah. And when you look up quite close and you only crop right in, it's just this beautiful, yeah, abstract painting of color. Yeah. Um, so I, I love actually, that even in those parts, there's this sense of play and um, a sense of just exploration without this. Uh, I guess the the sort of the usual approach to, to painting someone's eye and it needing yeah. to look exactly like the eye and yeah. having all of the colors. And it's down to how I categorize the face in a way, right? And it's, it's interesting. So like when I look at a reference picture and every single reference picture is different to me or a person, a person sitting in front of me, any reference in general, um, it depends on how the light is hitting them, how I will categorize them. So I won't necessarily like look two eyes and nose and a mouth. I always try to find an area where there's at least three colors meeting each other. So I look for junctions, yes. um, uh, junctions in the picture or in the person or in the view. And I look for these junctions where at least three colors are meeting. And then I start there and I find the colors. And then I kind of go, what if, what if the whole face didn't exist and I was just like like someone walking along a path trying to map my terrain and I just found another little junction that was three colours and I just it's like joining these little dots up and then it just appears. It, but I have fun along the way because all I have to worry about is junctions. All I have to worry about is blobs and, and shapes and I don't have to worry about faces. They just turn up at the end. I know that sounds really like Ugh, right but <laughs> they do though they just they just turn up at the end I'm like I don't search for the likeness I don't I it just if I I know that if I look after every little junction and every little relationship every little color relationship that the picture will just happen it is it it isn't uh, it isn't <laughs> at all it's very wise but again it's part of that um that understanding and confidence you have in trusting the process mm -hmm. that if you turn up you set the 15 minute timer, you look for the junction, you, you start on a small concentrated area and then just let it all open up past that. Suddenly yeah. you find yourself with one of your amazing finished pieces. That's what happens. But I mean, again, at the beginning, it's a case of, yeah, you've got to get your composition, right? So there's a general kind of a sketch of like, is this going to actually fit on the page? Mm -hmm. But in the past, actually, I haven't even worried about that on occasion because I actually love to crop ahead. I love to chop a head off you know, and I look to zoom in. So sometimes just for fun, I'll just start in a junction and go, I've no idea if the second eye is going to make it. This <laughs> <laughs> but I allow myself to lean into it to see what will happen. And over time, you just get a better instinct for what's going to fit where, you know? Yeah. But drawing regularly is very important though. And I think like, if that's for portraiture specifically, other like you get with landscape, it's way more fluid than that. But if you, if you want to do portraiture for me, like I, I sketch every day. Yes. You know, could you do you have your sketchbook to hand to hold up? I can, I can, it's just over there. I can do you want to run and it's, it's always it's, it's, it's filled with Ellie's drawings, actually. <laughs> oh, well, that's it's great though to even have have 
uh, Ellie's, I guess, uh, influence and participation in your sketching habits. You know, but it, it is a great practice that I know you, you encourage a lot of people yeah. to do. It took me years to, to start a sketchbook. I always went, oh, someday I'll start a sketchbook. And in fact, I still have some really nice ones that I got in Italy once that I'm too afraid to make a mark in. Right? Oh. But now I've completed a number of sketchbooks. And the thing is not to be precious about it. So this is my current one. And I'm getting sick of it now. So I'm looking forward to the next one. But look, I only have that much left. I only have like, I'd say there's probably only about 20 drawings left to go. Wow. And um, let me just get some of the things that are falling out of it out of the way. And let me get some like, okay, so I'm not sure if you can see. But oh, I, yes. so I'm a fan of, I have a mechanical pencil, right? Because I'm not a fan of having to, sh I want to make it as easy for myself as possible. You see, look, I drew a dog and then Ellie gave me a gold star. Ah. Right? <laughs> so the thing for me is like, I'm not precious about it and I do it when I can. So sometimes that means my five-year-old's there with me and then she comes over and goes, I'm going to give you, and I'm like, you wouldn't want to be precious about your dream. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then sometimes she just goes to town, you know. She didn't um, like that one. And um, she didn't like that one. <laughs> but the thing is, that actually trains me to be more and, and see it more as a practice, like a mindfulness practice. Which yes. is what, I'm sorry, there's so many post-it notes falling out of this. But, but uh, it also, I do in, in sketching in pen sometimes. If I have a pen, oh, then I'll gorgeous. do a sketch in pen. And, it, the, you know, it's sometimes I'm writing about something I'm watching on, on the telly or something. And other times I'm, um, other times I'm, but I usually write in a few notes as well at the same time. And it, I it basically, and I, I know I just showed it to you there, right? But the bottom line is my sketchbook's just for me. It's not yes. for anybody else. And, and that's, that's what you have to keep telling yourself. And it's really hard. It's really hard to because you do something and you feel proud of it. And you want to share it. By all means, share stuff that Instagram is for, right? But, mm -hmm. but the sketchbook has to become more of a personal thing. And that way then you're not like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's pages in there that are dedicated to budgeting or something boring. Or yeah. uh, mostly it's drawings now, but there are days when it's like something. But is, isn't, it a, isn't it also a helpful practice for training your eyes? So like you said, oh, yeah. you, go, you can go up and start a painting with paint as opposed to necessarily needing to rely fully on a compositional sketch. Yeah. But if you've dedicated every single day to sketching and drawing what you see, yeah. your eye is fairly well trained on You're, It is, and it's about judging distances, all about distances. So it's like in the same way that a tennis player would have an instinct for how far they need to reach to hit a ball or whatever, you know? Yes. Like with, with you just, it's, it's literally like a motor scale, like it's hand-eye coordination. You look at a distance in the reference and then you just, you automatically kind of know based on the scale that you're going where that is. And that's all you're practicing really. You're, mm -hmm. or, or maybe you're practicing a different skill, maybe you're practicing your shading, or maybe you're practicing, like sometimes I practice just abstraction in which case I'll force myself to draw just a single shadow shape which won't look like a face at all but I'm I'm trying to learn that particular skill on that day and then sometimes I indulge myself and let myself do a little bit of everything and and that's the thing and it kind of it, ask yourself well what am I trying to achieve right now rather than like I'm going to do a, a, a beautiful picture mm -hmm. um, and that's how you complete a sketchbook but I mean it, it wouldn't be probably like sitting like Turner sketchbook is sitting now in the National Gallery and I think, no. you know, this will definitely be burned at some point. <laughs> no, but I guess even if you looked back at your earlier sketchbooks, you'd see it as well how much you've evolved in yes. terms of, because I think if I picked up a sketchbook, I'd like, um, you know, that's, oh, that sort of that's aspect actually of starting. The fun bit. You, you get to look back and you get to have self-compassion. You get to have compassion for where you started and you get to give past you kudos for showing up and going, because sometimes when you're doing well, you forget that you weren't doing well. You're always, the bar is always getting raised all the time. Mm -hmm. So like you, you go back to your old sketchbooks and you go, oh, I couldn't do that before. And, and then you actually get a sense of pride. And it looks, so in fact, starting when you don't feel like you're that strong is the best thing to do. And mm -hmm. have, have a sketchbook and a half or two of just like, I can't do arms and, and just keep doing it. And then like, I can do arms. And everyone's like, oh yeah, you're so talented. You can always do arms. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> like I have a sketchbook and half that I says I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, that's I, something I did actually, Lana. I I bought a lot of cheap ones when I was when I was first getting back into drawing because I hadn't drawn in a very very long time. I did blind drawing for I I've got these really cheap sketchbooks. They were like copy books actually. I yes. think I used some copy books as well, but lines in them cheap out. And I just I opened up Pinterest, which had like millions of images just, and I I just sat looking at that and blind drawing, and they were awful. 
but I did blind drawing where I was just looking at the reference and just trying to get that eye hand coordination going and I'm sure I, I don't know how many of them I still have around the place or whatever but like they were never meant to see the light of day yes. um, but by the time I finished doing three or four of them I was like oh, okay cool now I feel like I now I feel like I've earned a moleskin you know which is a fancier sketchbook <laughs> well I think I think it's a really helpful and honest tips that you're giving because um and you said it earlier where you know suddenly you're a you know, a very successful artist selling lots of work, winning lots of awards, you know, on TV, uh, having conversations with people and um, people just think, oh, they, they just have a natural talent for it. But really you're, you're letting us all know that you put in hundreds and hundreds of practice hours mm -hmm. to, to, to really dedicating and improving what you do. And just, I guess, just showing up and having that little 15 minute timer to help you along and thinking of your future self yeah. to say thank you to. Um, I think they're really, really um, practical tips and they all sound doable, like really achievable. They're not, you know, you don't need to go to the Florence Academy and study there for five years mm -hmm. um, to have, you know, to, to be able to say that you can make art that is, um, whatever you have available, whatever you can do. And again, like, I mean, I have a little one, but like she's in school at the moment and everything, but like, it's just not practical. She's looking for my attention all the time. And I, I don't get to spend an hour sketching, but it, the way I do it is with my sketchbook. One, one page might get done in one session, or it might take me a whole week to fill a page in my sketchbook because I'll get to do half a nostril before she needs, you know, a, a smoothie or something. And, yes. and I'm like, well, today's, today's contribution has been half a nostril. But yes. it's been a very carefully observed nostril <laughs> and therefore the, the job has been done, but there's nothing to show for it, but the work has happened. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I think it's good. I think it's all good. I think even, you know, even making this time for us today and 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 just always. sharing a little bit what you do, what you do. It's, um, it's always such a lovely pleasure talking to you, Sinead. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Um, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. And I hope everyone who's listened has a lovely weekend. And um, I'm hoping to do another Instagram Live next week. Um, but I will see you, Sinead, on Monday. Thank you, Thank Lara. you. Thank Bye. you so much. You're a gem. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone, for watching.